Life is beautiful. Give it up for the incredible in Q. Hey. How you guys doing? You good? You can make some more noise. You feel good? All right, awesome. So I just want to bond the room real quick. So everybody stand up out of your chairs. I know that sounds crazy, but get up. And first of all, it's been a long day. Put your hands up over your head and look up and wiggle your fingers. And now lean all the way back. Lean all the way back. Make some noise and go, ah. And then widen your stance. Lean forward and just start to bump into the person next to you. Make some physical contact. Good. Now get up, everybody turn this direction and start to massage the person in front of you because you deserve it and because I love you. All right, now everybody chop, do the chops, do the chops like this, and then go low on the back and everybody go, ah. All right, great. Now introduce yourself to two people that you don't know right around you and just say hello. All right, awesome. Now everybody can sit down. You can all sit down. Now everybody take a deep breath. Breathe in. Let it out. Take another deep breath, and this time make some noise when you let it out. Ready? Growing up is about learning and then unlearning everything that we have learned. <laughs> Growing up is about learning and then unlearning everything that we have learned. It's about constructing and then deconstructing who we are at every turn. Disrupting being in the flow to contemplate the tide than letting go again to take the ride without your mind. I fight to get ahead, but I always leave someone behind. And I'm scared to lose it all for something I'm not sure I'll find. But faith is always blind. The only thing that's guaranteed is we were born to die. If you have a voice, use it, or it withers over time, where forgotten dreams were buried in the corners of our minds, and a life without a dream is not a life, it's killing time, and since time is killing us, it's only right we compromise. We are here to change the world. So it's selfish not to try to pacify yourself as your life passes you by to be a passenger when you're the one that asked if you could drive. Otherwise, you wouldn't be alive. We chose to come out of the darkness and shine at such a pivotal time. An individual matures in a jagged line. But if you put that on a chart, you'd see a gradual climb. I guess it's hard to notice evolution when it's real time. Everybody take a deep breath. Let it out. See, if humanity is unconsciously a hive mind, then any thought is every thought, and every thought is mine. So I don't wonder what would happen if our consciousness combined. Instead, I wonder what would happen if our consciousness aligned. And according to statistics that I've read, we've lowered crime, poverty, disease. Overall, they're on the decline. But when I turn on the news, it's almost like I'm watching vines because the sound bites are looped on the scary storylines. What if things were getting better and we didn't see the signs because we were brainwashed to think we were living in the end of time? There is no end of time. There is no understanding unless we understand our universe is still expanding. Our answers never last because nothing ever happens. And yet everything is happening, and that shit's hard to fathom. 
So I'm looking to commission a painting from Peter Tunney that says, put them in a cage and feed them money. I find it seriously funny. Why are our priorities so toxic? Profit, people, planet should be planet, people, profit. Put them in that order and our progress would be shocking. As much as cavemen turning noises into talking, it's like a little kid when he is getting used to walking. With every step, he's still unsure the floor is going to stop him. Like if it wasn't there, the world might decide to drop him. And falling's only fun when getting back up is an option. My chosen life purpose is not the purpose of my life. If it is, then my value will always have a price. My truth is more important than the truth that I write. My veins become roots in the middle of the night. My chosen life purpose is not the purpose of my life. It's learning what is right for us instead of what is right. Maturity means standing in the dark to bring the light and then letting go and trusting that everything else will be all right. Thank you. All right, if you guys feel good, say yeah. yeah. All right, say that shit five times louder. Say yeah. yeah. Beautiful. I was talking to uh, my therapist recently. <laughs> Anybody else got a therapist? <laughs> All right, we can own our vulnerability from a place of strength, right? So I was discussing with him the differences between ideas and ideology. And he was saying that ideas are things that you can use like tools in your life. And they change as your truth and your experience changes. But then he said ideologies are very different because ideologies are things that you have to force everything in your reality into the frame of, otherwise you lose control. And that very much resonated with me. So when I left his office, I started thinking about my own life, and I realized that I use way too many ideologies, whether they were passed down to me or whether I created them myself, because you can create ideologies yourself. So I thought to myself, now, I don't want to use ideologies. I want to use ideas, because ideas can change as my truth and my experience changes. So I say a declaration to myself. I say, from now on, I am only going to use ideas. From now on, only ideas. And then I thought to myself, did I just create a new ideology? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Have you ever been excited for now? Well, how about now? If not, just look around. Seriously, everybody look around, make some eye contact. Your feet are on the ground, but you're sitting upside down. The world is really round, and gravity is not the only thing that holds you down. See, light is faster than the speed of sound, and outer space doesn't make a sound. Our inner space can be way more profound. I could say more, but how? I'd be better off attempting to express it through a howl. How? Everybody do that shit. How? Life is fucking beautiful. even when it's ugly. I know that seems unusual to almost everybody. So it's lucky you're not everybody. You're somebody, and the sum of anybody in a prehistoric body. So jump without the net. I promise you'll remember that you came here to forget. But it's hard for me to say yes. It's easier for me to say next year, 
When the weather's fine, when I have the money or the time, or the relationship I want, or the career or the house or the car or the watch, Watch life pass me by waiting for an invitation when the world is greater than our nation or my occupation. The only thing I know is that we're all in this together. And the future of this earth depends on how we treat each other. But how we treat each other starts with how we treat ourselves. And how we treat ourselves starts with how we see ourselves. And how we see ourselves starts with context. Nothing can exist without its opposite. Remember this, the next time you find you're in an argument and both sides are talking shit and you forget your point, except you're angry now and want to win, so you continue yelling till they give it up by giving in so you can stand victorious because you're right. On what again? Hmm. That's why we send young people to war. Young people tend to die without asking what for. But one man's ceiling is another man's floor. Let's meet up in between, said the ocean to the shore. Hopelessly inquisitive, a mind without a master. I watched the master on a tab of acid, then performed after, and yet my set was an unparalleled disaster because all my poems came out as... <laughs> Are you guys seeing this shit? <laughs> do you laugh on instinct or do you choose to laugh? Do you ask because you care or do you merely ask? I ask you this because I care about how humans act. We're animals aware of our future and our past, and this can be an obstacle to traveling our path. Instead of just accepting where we're at, we analyze our tracks for what we could have had, looking back, focused on the memories instead of on the facts, hence what we attract. But it's hard to factor in how fast it really flashes past. It's an exponential graph from creation into ash. I'm sentimental one minute, then I'm making plans. Staking claims, shaking hands, breaking out or breaking in. I have about a billion mimes hidden underneath my skin, and they pull my face into this grin, or they push my wrinkled forehead in. So pour the gin, philosophize, because no one has your awesome eyes. Your view is worth the lows and highs we go through on these coaster rides. Control has got us holding on when letting go could be more fun. Hands up. Put your fucking hands up. <laughs> now just at one time, just let them try. Eventually this all has to stop. Level out, then come back up until you reach the very top, because one day all your wheels fall off, so take advantage of your shocks. Do something you've never done. Do someone you've never done. Go someplace you've never gone. Someplace that will scare you some. Be someone you've never been. You feel all that adrenaline? It's medicine to jumpstart the spark inside your skeleton. See, everywhere you are is where you're supposed to be. So hopefully, you're hopelessly as lost as me. Because if you're not, you ought to be. Thank you. You guys feel good, one hand in the sky? Just snap it out. Um, so, do you guys have El Pollo Loco in Vegas? <laughs> so I was in El Pollo Loco once, and I was leaving, and I had a little bit of rice left over in a container. And there was a homeless guy outside, and he said, hey man, do you have any change? And I was like, no dude, I don't have any change, but I was like, I have this rice, I'd be happy to give you my rice. And he goes, I swear to God, he looks at me, he goes, no, that's cool, I'm trying not to eat carbohydrates. <laughs> and I was like, only in L.A. <laughs> and then I was like, 
Only in America. I've got a crystal house for my missile mind that locks on to the things I wish were defined. In a blanket of stars or a ripple of time where we get to stop, pause, fast forward, or rewind. See, we are all going nowhere. So I became a nomad with no cares and no pad scribbling soothsayer. A truth slayer with a pen as a sword swinging a cyclone simile the same as before. I am trouble devised inside of a subtle disguise in a fake little bubble with a city inside. It's all marketing lies when five guys in a high rise decide to supersize your fries. So now you've got an ass that is big enough to ride and you can start a fire from the friction in your thighs. You're sitting on your Velcro couch with a chicken pot pie and a cell phone pouch in a flat screen life like, hey, I'm about to buy a bunch of shit that I don't need. <laughs> what? I got a credit card. I can afford these. I'm going to get a bigger car. I'm going to get a bigger house. I'm going to get an iPhone 10. I'm going to get a leather couch. I get a gym membership that I won't use. I'm going to pop prescription pills and drink booze. I'm going to cap my girl fake boobs. I'm going to get a pair of baby alligator shoes and a three-piece suit. I'm a legend in my own mind. I vote Republican and I work in the coal mines. I got a fat gut and a George Foreman grill. I got a MacBook loading up my acting reel. I got a pool that I never clean. I'll take a Hummer limousine to the Evergreens, hunt with an M16 and kill everything. I got a barbed wire tattoo because that shit looks menacing. I leave the house with the lights on. My favorite part of the day is feeding mice to my python. I don't believe global warming exists. It's a myth. Scientists have invented the shit. And I admit there's some climate differences, but that's it. It's just a normal planetary shift. Dude, get a grip. I drive a Mustang, so my mustache is a must-have. I wear a musk that is made from a muskrat's nutsack. <laughs> I have a Snuggie, two pending lawsuits, and a daughter that is thin enough to hula hoop a Fruit Loop. <laughs> I pick up my wife's dog's Pomeranian poop. My therapist has a therapist, so it's like a whole support group. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know what I'm getting at? What? I'm pro-life and I'm pro-death penalty, and essentially the pressure has been fucking with me mentally. God, tell me what to do. I know that no one could be as hypocritical as you. Isn't that true? Uh, we should get some new shoes. Let's hit the mall, y'all. Shop until we feel used. I want it all. Call Janie. Tell her where we are. Well, fuck it. She can just record it on her DVR. I'll text her from the car. But bring me Xanax, because Amber's dating Xander, and it's making me all manic. I saw them at the standard getting hammered, and I panicked. I just don't understand it. He's taking me for granted. I haven't felt this bad since I saw the Titanic. <laughs> and to be perfectly candid, I can barely stand it. I want to cry, and I don't know why. <laughs> I want to die, but instead I get go to the party and hide. I'll do anything to distract me from me. I just want to be the people that I see on TV. I'm the land of the brave and the almost free. I'm America. And I'm beautiful as can be. Sound the alarm. Something is wrong. People are tired of living a con. Waking and working and walking away with a payment that barely can cover their costs. Plus, they're discovering flaws. Look at the government, totally lost, tending to bend to the corporate agenda depending on how they can render the laws. Open the doors. Turn on the lights. See how they scatter from out of your sight? Take in the data because all of it matters and mind over matters. A matter of time. Blind, deaf and dumb, running away from the weight of the way that the world is confined. Wrapped in a rhythm, we're rats in a system that's trapped in religion and money and pride. 
pride, pride, pride. Sound the alarm. Something is wrong. People are tired of living the calm, waking and working and walking away with a payment that barely could cover their cost. Plus, they're discovering flaws. Look at the government totally lost. Tended to bend to the corporate agenda, depending on how they can render the laws. Open the doors. Turn on the lights. See how they scatter from out of your sight? Taking the data because all of it matters and mind over matters a matter of time. Blind, deaf, and dumb, running away from the weight of the way that the world is confined. Wrapped in a rhythm, wraps in a system, trapped in religion and money and pride. Pride, pride, pride. Sound the alarm. Something is wrong. People are tired of living in a calm. Waking and working and walking away with the payment. The can cover their costs. Plus, they're discovering flaws. Look at the government totally lost. Tending to bend to the corporate agenda, depending on how they can render the laws. Open the doors. Turn on the lights. See how they scatter from out of your sight. Taking the data because all of it matters. A mind over matters. A matter of time. Blind, deaf, and dumb, running away from the weight of the way that the world's can fire. Wrapped in a rhythm. We're rats in a system that's trapped in religion and money and pride. Thank you. So, uh... Um, you guys are an awesome audience. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, I just want to say real quick, how amazing is this of Life is Beautiful as a festival to put this on as a learning center and allow you guys to come here and hear these amazing, amazing speakers. So give it up for Life is Beautiful, for Justin, for Amanda, for everybody who's involved, Catalyst. Uh, there's a saying that I really love, and it's, I don't know who discovered water, but it probably wasn't a fish. And I love that saying, because to me it means you can't see your own environment when you're in it. You're just a part of it. You can't differentiate yourself from it. So I was at a gala recently and I was bored as shit. <laughs> and there was this woman at my table, so I'm like, hey, there's this saying that I like. You know, it's like, I don't know who discovered water, but it probably wasn't a fish. What do you think it means? She looks at me, and she goes, I don't care what it means because I don't agree with it. So I was like, okay, uh, tell me more. And sh she goes, well, um, evolution. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> She goes, yeah, like fish, you know, became human beings. And human beings discovered water, so fish discovered water. And in my mind, I was like, are you fucking stupid? Like, <laughs> but I didn't say that. You know the shit you say in your mind and then you don't? What I said was I was like, oh, okay, well, I don't think you're getting the analogy here. And I, like, told her the thing about, like, you know, like the environment. I mean, this is literally like in a thousand year old Zen saying, okay? And I tell her about the environment. She goes, no, no, no. She goes, evolution, fish, human beings, human beings discovered water, fish discovered water. So now I'm like, okay, uh, we're just gonna have to agree to disagree on this. And she goes, no, we're not gonna agree to disagree. You're just not on my level. And then she goes, it happens. And she did that shit with her hands. <laughs> like she was opening a big ass book or. <laughs> and I was like, it does happen. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not on the same level. Hmm. I want to buy a house where I can make memories in every room. Plant a garden in my backyard and watch the flowers bloom. It will be big, but not so big that one would get lost. It will be nice, but not so nice that everybody whispers, what it cost? It will have gorgeous views, but being higher doesn't mean superior. I've learned not to judge a house by what's on the exterior. It's what's on the interior. And I don't mean design. Because a house is not a home unless the people are aligned. I used to want a mansion because I thought that'd bring me joy. 
I went and bought a lot of stuff that I had no time to enjoy. I was working for a living, but it wasn't working because I wasn't living. And a life without living is unfulfilling, filling up the empty space with all the things that I was getting, yet I could never get enough or give enough to be enough. And that was constantly upsetting. Value is a funny thing. Is it something that you own? Or is it something that you bring? Experience is priceless, and that doesn't cost a thing. Because once you make your mind up, you can accomplish anything, even if it seems impossible. I promise you, impossible is possible. We take for granted that defying gravity is illogical. Intend what you desire, and your will will be unstoppable. You could buy an island with a climate that is tropical or fly a helicopter off the coast of the Galapagos while eating avocado toast. These aren't jokes. Even if I was flat broke, I wouldn't fuck with hope. I hope. I hope. Hope is like despair in disguise. So instead, I decide, then I watch as my reality realigns. After all, what is time if it's different in a different place? We're all in one place, floating out in outer space. They'll never bottle time. We can't buy anymore. And if we could, it'd be sold out at every corner store. So lately, I've been thinking, what if less is really more? If our mortality is what we're really living for. I want to slide in socks across Italian marble floor. I want imported art to fill up every corridor. I want my kids to use my bed like it's their trampoline, to walk on top of my couch like it's their balance beam. I want to use my things so they aren't using me. After all, the most important things in life are free. We only borrow land. We only borrow time. We only borrow love, but you can borrow mine. My house is your house. You can stay over any time. If you're a friend, you're going to have a permanent vacancy sign. Community is what this culture is lacking. We pretend to be connected, but mostly it's just unscripted acting. We isolate ourselves and hide from our emotions, then pack our schedules as an excuse to stay in motion. We're living by the beach, and yet we never see the ocean because it's always out of reach in the midst of the commotion. God forbid we'd have to sit alone without distraction. It's hard to notice thoughts when you're constantly in action. No matter what your status is, that isn't satisfaction. So I don't care what you do as long as you do it with passion. That's why I want to share my gifts and cultivate compassion. Because the fastest way to bliss is through meaningful interaction. And since I'm not even sure that we exist, I've started asking if this world of form is merely the illusion of attachment. Everybody take a deep breath. Let it out. If I could let it all go, my roof would be the stars. My floor would be the earth. My door would be a jar. My walls would be the wind. My seat would be a stone. My bed would be the clouds and my heart would be my home. But since I have a family and I don't live this life alone, I want to buy a house where I can make memories in every room. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to do one more piece. Thank you guys so much. It's really a pleasure. Thank you, Vegas. Thank you, Life is Beautiful. Um, so speaking of homes, I used to live in this little back house. And uh, when I lived there, the woman who owned the main house, her mom moved in. At a certain point, she was in her 80s. 
And uh, her and I became very good friends. So before I would go to the studio, I like write songs as well. So before I would go to the studio on the day, we would sit and we would have coffee and we would discuss life and love and the pursuit of happiness. And I came to really love her. And then one night I woke up, it was like three in the morning and she was getting taken away on a stretcher and she was still okay, but she was going through major health complications. Her name's Dolores. And I went and I visited her in the hospital and she had tubes running in and out of her system and I sat with her for an hour and she had a high fever and she was in a lot of pain and she didn't recognize me. And I thought that it was her time. So I said my goodbyes to her. But Dolores was not done fighting. And she ended up getting better and they ended up moving her to a retirement community and I went and I visited her in the retirement community and she tells me that she's fallen in love. That she met this guy in the retirement community and that they're very much in love and she's happier than she's ever been in her entire life. So I wrote this poem. I want to fall in love at 85. Go on shuffleboard dates and dance to hip hop from 95. We'd rock matching track suits and rope gold chains. We'd look like Run DMC, but in their old age. We'd take aerobics classes and wear bifocal glasses and eat at IHOP and hold hands at Sunday masses. And when it comes to the bedroom, well, nothing much would happen in the bedroom because we're 85. <laughs> I did that at a show once, and there was an older woman there, and she was like, speak for yourself, Sonny. <laughs> but we would still be down to take a walk or take a drive or sit and talk or have a drink and watch the passers-by and ask each other why and how and who and where and when. And then we'd laugh and cry again about the people we had been. And I would touch her withered skin and comment on how thin it is to keep in something infant. And she would smile sweet and blush and tell me that I think too much. She's right, I think too much. Fuck, it's always been a problem. But then again, that's how I made my green like the goblin. When I was in my 20s, I was eating top ramen, counting up my pennies, saving up to go food shopping. But now I'm 85, and somehow I feel more alive. I turned my hearing aid up and bumped Jurassic 5. And when it comes to the bedroom, well, hopefully, every once in a while, she lets me knock her boots into the floral patterns of our bedpost, then hold her head close like death isn't chasing us, planning on erasing us and replacing us with better versions of us, reshaping us, remaking us, then recreating us with new identities so we can make new memories. Hush, little baby. Learn to walk and talk and think and lie and feel and fight and fuck and die and never get the answers why. She dips a joint of grass and wheat grass and we get high. Her hair is silver as the moan in the Miami sky. We still pop pills, but it's not the Xanax anymore. Whenever we can't sleep, we listen to the ocean floor. She got a sound of the CCD from me from the Brookstone store and ever since I've been snoring like a Like a really good metaphor for snoring. Sorry, I go blank sometimes. What, I'm 85. I'm not complaining, I'm just happy that I'm still alive. And happy that I have my better half by my side, super fly. She doesn't look a day over 65. <laughs> when I first saw her, I was totally in awe. She was classical. So I was like, yo, yo, ma. <laughs> and that was all it took. 
A single look and I was shook. I fell for her like some loose shingles from our Spanish roof. And I'm a lover till she loses every last root and has to glue dentures to her gums to chew solid food. Ooh. Now that's real love, dude. That's some push comes to shove love. Not when it's convenient love. Hospital bed love. Feed her ice chips love. Never leave the room, love. Sleeping in the chair, love. Pray to up above, love. Have to pull the plug, love. Miss her in my bones, love. Everything about her, love. Die within a month, love. Can't live without her, love. Love. The only reason that we are all alive and none of us should have to wait until we're 85. I'm in queue. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.